It's Tuesday, January 16th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. Many area districts have canceled school and activities today, citing the extreme cold. Some have announced plans to hold virtual classes. The National Weather Service says this cold snap has reached record territory. On Sunday, we did uh, break the record minimum high temperature. We recorded a minimum high temperature of, of 3 degrees and that broke an old record of six degrees that was set in 1881. The St. Louis, Quincy, and Rolla areas are in for a bit of a warm-up in the next few days. Wind chill advisories will expire today for St. Louis and Rolla. A wind chill warning also expires in Quincy, but that will be replaced by a wind chill advisory until tomorrow morning. National Weather Service meteorologist Marshall Thaler says more bearable temperatures are expected tomorrow. Enjoy Wednesday. That'll be a nice, nice break from the, the cold. It'll probably feel pretty warm to most people, but we'll have another round of cold Friday into Saturday. It doesn't look as severe nor nor as long-lasting, and another warm-up after that. The high should be around 35 tomorrow and Thursday. Thaler says that will drop into the teens this weekend. Illinois lawmakers are back in Springfield this week to start their spring session, but it will likely be months before any significant action. Alex Degman reports. Lawmakers are scheduled to be in Springfield a total of four weeks before the March 19th primary, three days each of those weeks. The entire House is up for election this year, so is roughly a third of the state Senate. Workdays are typically light leading up to a primary, but Democratic State Senator Bill Cunningham says it's not as though nothing will happen. In the next couple of weeks, you will see, as usual, hundreds, if not thousands of bills filed. They'll be assigned to committee and we'll begin working through those bills as we normally do. But I do think you'll see a lot more action after the March primary. Plus, work on the budget begins when the governor offers his blueprint in February during his State of the State address. I'm Alex Degman. U.S. Senator Eric Schmidt says he's not happy with how Congress is trying to pass a plan averting a government shutdown. The Missouri Republican says lawmakers should vote on multiple appropriations bills as opposed to a single bill funding the government. He says the current process empowers congressional leadership. Schmidt also says Congress needs to be scrupulous about how the Department of Defense spends money. In the Pentagon, um, the God's honest truth is they've not been upfront with taxpayers about these audits. They don't sort of perform them, and so that's certainly something I think there's a point of agreement that we'll continue to focus on. Schmidt was a guest on the Politically Speaking Hour on St. Louis on the Air. A historically black university in Missouri is hiring an outside agency to investigate its president who was on paid leave following the suicide of a top administrator. Lincoln University in Jefferson City says President John Mosley volunteered to take paid leave. The Board of Curators says there are issues with his compliance with policies and procedures. The website HBCU Buzz says the investigation revolves around the suicide of the school's vice president of student affairs, Antoinette Candia Bailey. The website quotes relatives as saying she experienced bullying and severe mistreatment in her job. The St. Louis Reparations Commission will be extended another six months. It was set to end this spring. As St. Louis Public Radio's Andrea Henderson reports, the commission will use the time to discuss reparations with more residents. African Americans in the area can continue discussing how they would like the city of St. Louis to repair the harms done to its black residents. The St. Louis Reparations Commission asked Mayor Tashar Jones for an extension in November to continue engaging with the community. They also asked for money to help with advertising, booking costs, and to produce the final report. Kayla Reed is the commission's chair. With the sort of expectation of both a written report and an engagement strategy, those things do cost. And there is a frustration from the public around how they're hearing about it. Jones will discuss the city's economic justice plan at the February commission meeting. I'm Andrea Henderson, St. Louis Public Radio. Frigid temperatures yesterday did not stop St. Louisans from honoring the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy. St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt reports an event at the University of Missouri-St. Louis stressed unity in the face of division. The audience inside Umsel's Two Hill Performing Arts Center swelled with energy as the Sheldon's All-Star Chorus kicked off the university's annual celebration of the civil rights leader. Keynote speaker Benjamin Jealous says there's still a lot that needs to happen to achieve King's goals for America. This country is fragile. 
It's only ever been a small number of us who have led the fight to keep the American dream alive. Jealous says the country's history is marred by racial division, which has erased black history and impeded progress toward prosperity for all people. I'm Eric Schmid, St. Louis Public Radio. Some of the items we are following in the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom. A warm-up will begin over the next 24 hours after this record-setting cold snap. We are monitoring the aftermath of the frigid holiday weekend. Opening statements are today in the murder trial of the man charged with fatally shooting St. Louis police officer Tamaris Bohannon near Tower Grove Park in 2020. Thomas Kinworthy is going on trial. Officer Bohannon was 29 when he was killed in the line of duty. The Environmental Protection Agency is holding meetings this week about the ongoing efforts to clean up radioactive waste around St. Louis. Two sessions today will focus on Coldwater Creek, where there are finally plans to put up signs warning of potential danger. As we go out today, more from the Sheldon's All-Star Chorus and UMSL Voices of Jubilation during yesterday's Martin Luther King Jr. Day event at the University of Missouri-St. Louis. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, and we are a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Theme music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.